Are you unsure about what to do with some of these cut apart pages that might be in your 12 by 12 paper pads? These are six by six cut aparts. Sometimes if you're a card maker, sometimes they're too big for cards unless you're doing a six by six card and they don't always work as titles. So what can you do with these types of cut aparts? I have some different ideas for you if you stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Beth, welcome. So today I am working on this six by six cut apart page that is in my Colors of Autumn pad. I am getting back to this pad again. I feel like I've had to take some longer breaks um, working on this pad, but I'm back and I have some ideas to tackle these six by six pages. Now, as a card maker, some of you do make six by six cards. I don't make a lot of six by six cards, but I scrapbook, so there's also the chance that it could something could be a title on a scrapbook, but these are kind of just weird to be included as a title. So I have some different ideas for you today on how to use these cut aparts. I had some of them are like fall decor ideas, and some of them are just other ways to use the cut aparts in paper crafting. You don't have to have fall like you can use this this is the recollections pad and i know they do tend to have the six by six cut aparts in them a lot or at least they used to i haven't bought one of their hot buy pads in a few years but so you may have this in a different style you could totally use them in the same way you would just have a different theme for your decor piece or whatever so we, I will show you the ideas and kind of do a quick tutorial on what I'm doing. And hopefully you can put some of these six by six cut aparts to good use in your space as well. I'm just getting started by trimming down all of the cut aparts. There was a tab at the top of the page and I just started by trimming that off. And then I'm just going to be trimming each cut apart to six by six, just kind of starting with that same size. And then depending on the project, we'll trim some down a little further if we need to. And I am trying to make sure that I don't have parts of the other cut apart still on. So for project no number one, we're gonna start with that pumpkin background piece that says choose to be grateful. And I decided to trim this one down to about four and a quarter by six. So I would have liked to have gone down to four by six, but it would have cut off part of the words. So, and just to keep it simple on this first one, I'm turning this into a journal card for a gratitude journal. So just something quick and easy you could do. You could also add it to a five by seven card if you wished. Project number two, I'm gonna trim down a little further. This one, I am trimming down to three and a half by three and a quarter, just because that got rid of everything else but the words. Then I'm gonna take the extra pieces I have there, and there are some cute pumpkins that are still on there. So I wanna go ahead and harvest those. I'm gonna harvest my pumpkins. Um, since I don't have any in my garden to harvest, I'm going to pull them. I'm going to harvest them from my paper, but I'm just going to fussy cut those out and I can come back and use those as embellishments later if I want to. I'm not going to worry about the leaves because those are much tinier and I do not have the patience to cut those, but I love pumpkins. I love to include pumpkins on my project, so I'm definitely going to take the pumpkins and I like the fact that there's different colors and different sizes. I don't care that they're not whole pumpkins. So I'm going to cut out one more pumpkin here. So this is another way, even if you don't care about the words that are on the paper or any other images, harvest what you can. Harvest what you know you'll use. Fussy cut them out and use them as embellishments on whatever projects you're going to make. So to finish off this project, I am going to turn this one into an A2 size card. Now it's down small enough that I can actually use it as a sentiment. I'm taking another full sheet from my pad, something kind of solid-ish that I can use as my card mat, trimmed it down to four by five and a quarter. 
And then I was just trying to see how, at the time, how wide my piece and my sentiment piece ended up being so that I could make my accent piece that goes behind it just a little bit bigger. I'm using one of the border cut apart strips that's in that was in the pad and I'm going to just trim it down get all the other border parts off and I'm going to trim it down to five and a quarter inches and I just left it the width that it was. And now I just get to put everything together. I'm going to use my ATG to just add the adhesive to all the different pieces. This is how I mass produce. It's just quicker and easier for me. The less times I have to pick up my tape gun, the better. So I'm going to start with that one fall pattern piece in the background and then add my strip and then I'll add my sentiment piece on top of that. And now I'm going to pull in a couple of those pumpkins that I fussy cut. I decided to go with <coughs> a bigger orange one and then kind of a smaller, more of a brownish yellow. And then on these, I'm just using my Barely Arts glue to add those there, kind of overlapping on my strip to the side of my sentiment. Then all I have to do is add my card front to my card base and it's done. So if you wanted to, you could also bubble cut around the words. You could pull out just certain words and make your own sentiment. There's several different ways you could use those. So project number three is a little more involved. I have some shims, like wood shims that we just happen to have on hand. You could also buy packs of wood shims at your hardware store. And I am just marking them at just over six and a quarter because I'm going to be trimming them down and I want them to be at least six and a quarter inches long. So now instead of measuring them both, I'm just copying over the measurements. If you don't have shims, you could use those jumbo popsicle sticks that I just flashed on the screen. I have seen them on Amazon and at Walmart before. I will link, I will try to link them in both places below. If you use the jumbo popsicle sticks, you will have rounded edges, but it would save you this step where I'm trimming them down to my six and a quarter inches. I'm actually using something called miter shears. And this is just like a heavy duty, heavier duty scissors that trims thin pieces of wood to like angles if you need it to, but I'm just trimming straight edges and you can see the wood is just a bit thicker than my shears would like. I will link these down below as well, but please, if you don't think you'll need them for more than one project, don't worry about buying them. Go with popsicle sticks. So I have my four pieces and now I'm gonna do like a faux stain. So I'm just showing you that you could use paint, you could use antique wax if you had it, use whatever brown paint you have on hand. And we're gonna create, you could use stain too if you have it, um, but you don't necessarily have to go out and buy it. I'm just taking some brown paint, it's some apple barrel acrylic paint and a um, baby wipe. And so the baby wipe is still moist and I'm applying my paint onto my shim pieces there. And you can see that it's not going on, you know, super dark. You can still see the wood grain beneath it. So it's just acting like a stain. Some places like it just depending on how much I had left on my baby wipe, it went on lighter than I wanted it to. Sometimes it went on a bit darker than I wanted it to, so I used just the clean part of a, the baby wipe to lighten it up just a little bit. But I did want it to be darker, but I wanted it to be like a consistent color all the way through. So be sure that whatever you're using, that you do the edges as well as the ends and the front and back. Because we're gonna be creating um, like a decor piece with this. This is like the hardest or most involved project we're doing today. And even this didn't take very long. It, I mean, it took longer to dry. I think I've, I've only sped this video up two times. So it didn't take a super long time to complete any of these projects. But I did actually in the whole process of things, I did this part first so that they could dry and then I came back in and finished off this particular project later. But one nice thing about using the paint instead of the stain is like there's no odor 
sometimes the stains, especially if it's an oil-based stain, can create an odor that you don't want in your house and it takes a lot longer to dry. So this is definitely probably the quickest and easiest method if you don't have stain on hand anyway. So, and you can pick up the Apple Brow paint, any craft store, Walmart, whatever. Oh, you could also wear gloves and it would save you the dirty hands, but it did all wash off really easily. So we're gonna create one of those like scroll-like signs, like hanging signs. And so we have our wood pieces and I just added some hot glue to the very top part of my cut apart. The, I did not trim this cut apart down at all. I just left it at six by six. That's why I wanted to make sure that my wood pieces were just a little bit longer. So it kind of added that more of a frame aspect. So we're gonna add two of those wood pieces on the back part of the cut apart. And you wanna make sure you go down far enough that you don't cover any of your image. And then we're gonna kind of sandwich the cut apart in between two pieces of the wood. And I'm just pulling away some of the strings from the glue. And what I should have done on that bottom piece as well is add more hot glue to, so it holds the two pieces of wood together better. So I'm just kind of pressing it down, make sure it's gonna stay, going back in and adding some more glue on that bottom piece, and that's all there is to it. We are gonna add a hanger. This is just some simple jute twine. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna kind of figure out how much I want, cut it off, and then we're just gonna hot glue that to the back. And twine you can pick up at the Dollar Tree, Walmart, craft stores. So I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue on the left side, and then I'm gonna come, and I'm doing it at an angle. I'm gonna add my hot glue to the right side as well, and then I trim that up, and now you can hang it on the wall. I love these style of signs and was happy to make my own version. So for our fourth project, I'm going to make a decorative block or like a standing sign. If you have followed my channel for a while, you know that my husband and I have a business where we make decorative like wood blocks, and it's just a way that we are able to combine his passion for woodworking, my passion for paper crafting, and combine them into a business we can work together. So I have a two by six that has been cut down and stained. We just have a ton of these on hand, so I went with that. I'm trimming my cut apart down to five and a quarter by five and a quarter because my block ended up being five and a half by five and a half. You could use anything as your base that you can find, a you know, piece of wood from Dollar Tree, um, a canvas, whatever, but you will need some Mod Podge. I have a giant bottle. Um, you can pick up tinier bottles at Dollar Tree. You can find them on Amazon, any craft store. And then I just put down some wax paper to protect my surface. And then I have a foam brush that I'm applying my Mod Podge with. And I, you need to apply it to your surface, whatever that is, and the back of your paper as well. This will help prevent bubbles better. So the other way to prevent the bubbles is just to make sure you burnish it down really well. I'm using like a little rubber squeegee type thing. You could use a scraper from Pampered Chef. You could use a credit card, gift card, anything you happen to have on hand that would help rub the paper down into your sign surface without tearing it. So you do wanna do another coat on top of it after you've added the paper down, and then you also wanna come back and do a second coat just to make sure that everything is sealed down really well. Easy as that. Okay, so we took those four different cut apart pieces from that one 12 by 12 page and turned them into four different projects. So different ways to use them. I'm sure you guys have other ways too. So if you know, if you have different ways that you've used those six by six cut aparts from like the recollections pads, how have you used those in the past? Let everybody know in the comments below so that we can share more ideas, but hope you got some inspiration. Thank you so much for your time and hope you all have a very crafty day.